Well, hello everybody and welcome back to Fort Mud. Now, this build has been getting a crazy amount of attention, so I decided to come back here while we're waiting for the 8.1 patch, which is going to increase FPS by 40 to 45%, and then I'm going to be starting on my terraforming a super city build, which is going to be this basically on steroids. Now, I want to kind of quickly go over some of the things that I want to cover in this video, which are economics and how to terraform. Now, this build taught me a lot about terraforming, and to be honest, I completely shied away because I thought it was really, really difficult to do. It's not. It's actually really, really easy. And I'm just going to quickly show you right now how everything you need to know about terraforming to get something like this to work. All you need to do is make sure that the uh, hillside area on the outside is flat. So the issue that happens is if it's not flat, enemies will glitch into the corners and then they gain psychic powers, which allow them to hit any building within your city. Now, this has turned off a lot of people from building these cities because, like myself, they believed it wasn't possible and they had no idea how to fix it. And it's stupidly easy to fix it and this is how you do it. All you do is just make sure that the outside area around your corners is perfectly flat, like this. Now, I don't do wide swaths of terraforming because if you do strips like this, it terraforms the center for free and it also just gets a really good flat. So just do that around your tire perimeter until it's flat. If you have to, and you're super paranoid, like do it a couple times and then play around with it until the raids uh, don't come at you. Now there's another thing that you need to do, which is in the building of roads and pathways. Now the raiders are um, taking their driver's license test or something because they're just really super focused on obeying all traffic laws. So another thing that I do is I use a road system to lead the bandits away from my wall pieces. This will have them coming straight to where you want them. Now, the third thing you need to do is make sure that the entryway you have is at a decent incline. If the decline of the entryway is too steep, that's another reason that they may start running into the cracks of your terraforming using their psychic abilities. Now, the last thing you need to note is if there is any building, um, like if you had a road and then you terraformed it and it went sideways or you had a part of a building, if there is any building on the slope of your terraforming, even a road, um, that will trigger them to glitch into the terraforming and attack your building. Now, if you eliminate all that, Let's, you have no buildings attached to the side of your terraforming. You have a road system leading away. You go around the side of your base, flattening everything. And you have a decent slope, kind of like this, going to allow me to do some crazy, crazy stuff in my next build, terraforming a super city. But anyway, that is how you terraform in a nutshell. Here you go. That's it. That's all you need to know. Um, in order to do terraforming properly. And I think you can look at episode four, uh, Terraforming Fort Mud, and that goes over how I fixed this design if you want like more specific examples of how to do it. But I believe the, the way I just described it is sufficient to kind of get you started in the right direction. Now, the raiders had come through, burned all my stuff. I'm going to start um, terraforming these slopes. Uh, the symbol right here means that no one can reach it, which means that there's a slopage issue. Most likely, though, they can't reach It's fine, but they can't reach it because of the Palisade gates being completely destroyed. So let's go to our people. I had to um, remove a lot of people to... Fill my barracks up for the last video I did where I had 300 people attack my base. We'll, we'll never see anything like that uh, without inducing it through a mod. So I'm going to crank these bad boys down to three. And I'm going to repopulate the workforce of my city. And let's get the miners going. The SARS, the work camps. Um, yeah, that was a pretty pretty big thing. But yeah, we're rich. Um, we're just rich because we have lots of lots of uh, money and very low people. Tier four, I had to get 400 people. So a couple things I thought about doing was building out a little village, maybe even continuing the terraforming of this. I'm just gonna sit here at a, a tier three and uh, think about what I've done. No, I'm gonna kind of just go, this is great because I can just go over the economics of the game now and I don't have to really worry about it too much. I can also play the game on the maximum graphics and have really good frame rates because it's so small. So it's uh, it's just a really good way to show the game and the features. My, my last build went to a thousand people and oh my gosh, it just, uh, the latency. Now, something I recommend if this is your first time watching me, second time, doesn't matter. Always upgrade your root cellars like out of everything first because that increases the longevity if everything's stored there. So it's going to increase your food, especially if you're having um, 
food story issues. Like, I'm not really having food issues, but it's all good. Another cool thing that I did with this build is I um, designated an area for fodder. Like so, but you can also, if you have really... I'm actually, like, really lucky that the, the land up here has, like, a decent fodder quality of 74. But what I did in a prior build is I built out a crop field, a 15 by 15 crop field, and I just grew clovers on it. But I lowered the assigned workers to three instead of it being, um, I think, like, eight or nine people. But you're able to create uh, high-quality fodder areas in any... Kind of climate or, or terrain i did that in the wasteland build where they had a five percent fertility rate um there was nowhere for the cows to graze but by doing that um you can essentially uh, cr create an area where you can have cows so that was that was cool i thought i did it in this build but it looks like i didn't have to that's awesome um i've kind of like just stacked every single freaking building i can up here um my desirability of course is through the roof what i could yeah what i could do is expand to towns down there um, so they can't get up there because there is a slopage issue. So we need to figure out where the slopage issue is and fix it. So right now I'm fixing that and I think, um, you'll notice if you don't see people coming in, it's because they can't reach the beginning area of your slope, which means that I need to slope further back like so. And that should do it. Um... Let's bump up the builders to 16. We have enough room for about 91 more. Yeah, 30. Ugh. Almost 30 people. All right, cool. So now they can slope this area. We got the hunters. We need to get back down there and start producing again. Boom. I don't like that. That kind of sloped me down pretty bad. But uh, these these should correct it. It's this took me forever to get right to be honest. Um, okay, the slope is the slope is correct now, but I'm gonna. Uh, I, I'm afraid that this slope is so. It needs to be like a perfectly, like even slope, not perfectly perfect. Like this, this, this is sufficient right there. But you just you don't want large uh, degree changes because uh, that could trigger the enemies to run to the side. But uh, yeah, this is sufficient. This is sufficient, except for. Um, Right here. I'm gonna slope this up a little bit. There we go. Alright, and I'm also gonna upgrade upgrade these uh, stone walls. Let's get this looking pretty. Alright. I don't know why I didn't highlight that. There we go. Pretty time. But yeah, so as you can see. I have everything sloped perfectly um, so that the enemies will run right around it and charge straight up uh, through the fort. So that's a, that's a pretty cool, cool thing about this build. All right, so um, one area of the economy that I'm looking at is, is wood uh, because you could sell it for quite a bit of money. Decorations, but it costs so it costs uh, five gold to plant an oak tree, but you get a yield of nine at full maturity. I have these set to only cut down at full maturity. I've so a couple of factors. Um, trees do grow grow back, so after you plant your initial tree farm, you typically don't have to come back and plant more trees. However, there's a host of factors. Um, the worker rate, if the worker rate is over 100% and they have tools. Two people will actually will start depleting um, a work camp force area much faster than than you're planting. So I do come back and I do plant occasionally, and I but you can sell lumber for five to six gold a pop. So you're yielding nine lumber, and you're selling one of that lumber for how much it costs you to plant it. Like it's still honestly one of the, outside of cheese. Um, cheese is the best trade good. It is still my go-to um one of my go-to things is just straight up selling wood just build a couple work camps and uh you know when you have money keep keep throwing it also because wood is a very useful resource but um it does it is it does become unnecessary but it's really good early early game because it's something you can do once you hit tier two all right so i have a trader but yeah i, I sell cheese 
Um, is it, it, there's there's different play styles with this game because I'm gonna buy all these baskets because if you have a low population, you have a totally different economy that you can do. Like at a thousand people or 800 people, I'm not gonna be selling really any wood or doing anything like that because I'm using so much more of that material. The same with things like shoes and jackets. I'm I'm depleting those resources faster than I'm producing them because um, pelts pelts at pelts are really easy to these items right here are really easy to get when you have a low population. But when you have a high population, you deplete that stuff as fast as you bring it in. Um, soap is a, another one you could you could potentially sell, but you have to have herbs and stuff local and in high quality. As, no, the quality, sorry, high quantity. And um, so it's really dependent upon your map, the kind of things you can sell. But cheese is everywhere. You can do cheese in any playthrough. And it, I mean, look, 500 cheese for, for three grand worth of gold. And I'm producing here 500 milk a year on a really small uh, barn with four people. So each one of, yeah, it's it's absurd. It's absurd, it's, it's the best thing in the game. And then you also get meat and, and pelts, so cheese is the backbone of your economy now you can't go crazy and have like 10 you know barns because you can only sell as much cheese as you can stock and you have to find someone who's buying so that's that's not always going to be the case all right we're gonna buy some herbs uh buy some clay Probably gonna buy some soap. Keep the people clean. Um, I'm gonna buy some of these crap weapons just because I don't have too many. It's always good to have. Even it's better than nothing. Better than crap weapons. Nothing. All right, and they fill up the cheese again. So just keep selling cheese. Uh, clothing is uh, the second thing that I produce and sell because I can do off of. Off of just this one crop field, doing two flex, I'm like overproducing dramatically. Uh, the oh crap, sorry. Right, we got 30 raiders coming, but I have a thousand flax. I'm still like overproducing flax, and I can easily supply um, multiple weavers. I think I have one here. Uh, easiest way to know how many people I have doing something's over here. I have eight. Okay, so I just have one weaver, so I could easily do another weaver. Clothing is used by everybody. It keeps everyone happy. Um, and then you can sell it. I, I tend to kind of gravitate my trade items to towards the things that people use, because I rather overproduce those items and then any excess I can sell. The same with alcohol. That's one of the things that I like to overproduce, because I can sell um, any excess. And then the pub also brings in money. Provides happiness, provides a desirability bonus. Uh, some people actually um, don't build any alcohol at all or do any stuff with the alcohol because then they don't get um, the drunk, the drunken rampages that occur. All right, so let's uh, slow this down and watch this combat. And that person's gonna die. But yeah, see they. They tend to obey all traffic laws as long as you've followed all my advice on how to flatten the areas around your inclines. So here they come. And dramatic music cue. Yeah, this is taking a little bit long. They're, they're really adamant about obeying all the traffic laws, though. Look at them go. Single file. Single file, everybody. Alright. Um, yeah, I, they're gonna just get mopped. I mean, this thing can take out 300 people. It's 30 people isn't gonna eat. Put a dent here. Alright, there we go. So you can see they're they're just getting mopped up. Yeah, there's too many towers. 
But that's the one nice thing about having such a small village is that your raids are a lot smaller. Even on, I mean, this is the hardest difficulty, but it's uh, the raids are so small and I'm able to condense my defense so much that realistically they pose more of an annoyance than a threat because um, they run by and they kill civilians and everything. All right, so we're just going to completely mop up the, the, these bandits. They're all going to die pretty much. And um, you can see I'm getting the plus. On these, I'm getting a pretty low uh, defense modifier, but here I'm getting plus 16, 13, 18 damage. And if they happen to get up here, then the barracks start shooting them with plus 18. So it's just uh, having, having this height advantage literally makes these towers like doubles the, the, the it's like if i had like eight towers on a flat terrain like these four towers right here so um huge time saver okay all the bands did but yeah that's the defense in a nutshell but yeah those are the, that's how i kind of look at the economy and you're gonna have to play you're gonna have to play it by ear but uh there's there's like two ways to look at your economy is like how much is stuff selling for and how often does it actually sell? Like, it doesn't. If I, it doesn't matter really how much something sells for if no one is ever buying it. So that these are the things I go for. I even actually sell flour because flour is like I can get like two gold per flour, and flour is super easy to make. Uh, coal is something I sell in the tier one to tier two stage if I can mine it, but not if I'm uh, not if I'm using a charcoal burner. I actually like ran the numbers on it. And you're better off just selling the the raw wood um when you take into consideration all the people involved like you have to have someone burnt taking taking it to firewood taking it to coal it's like you don't make any more money um and you like you're making the same amount of gold per person so actually you're making a little bit less than than wood so you're actually better off just like cutting down wood and stuff and selling it than you are doing that but if you can mine the, the coal then it becomes very profitable. Uh, but we're not gonna. We're not, well, maybe we should. We could start selling coal. There's quite a bit of coal here. I usually uh, tend to save that for gold mining. And right now we have a uh, iron mine, so we got gold over here. So we're gonna get a gold mine up. And that's gonna bring in. Always make sure you put a temporary shelter near your mining operations. That, um, this has food and firewood, so if they get caught out in the snow, and the village was raided, we killed 26 of 30. But yeah, if they get caught out in the snow, they can come here. Or if they get hungry, they can come here and eat. Otherwise, they run all the way back to eat. So if you don't have temporary shelters near all of your areas that you're doing residential, um, you're doing industry for, you're going to have huge inefficiency. Um, you can see here, I have a, I have an 80% uh, an 80% work rate, even though it's so far away from the base. So make sure you have temporary shelters kind of dotted and the wagons will come and deliver food and firewood. So make sure that you have sufficient wagon shops. Um, right now I have a few hunters out and about killing deer. My food is like at a pretty good equilibrium for this build. So I'm not, in, I'm not entirely too worried about my food situation. I have an enormous amount of, uh, of wheat coming in. I'm doing, here I'm doing um, er, early game buckwheat's really good while you build up your fertility through compost because it only reduces uh, fertility by negative 2% instead of negative 5 and negative 6. But when you hit late game, when all of your stuff's at full fertility, sorry, that's the wrong one. Um, ah, anyway. When you uh, hit, hit late game and everything's at full fertility and you have a bunch of compost, that's when I switch over to... Uh, I do rye, personally. But wheat... Um, so two things you want to look at is fertility dependence. So rye is 7 out of 10. So rye is really good like when you have like a 70 to 80% fertility. But if you have like, you know, 90 to 100 you, and you want to get the most out of it, you want to do wheat then. So you kind of like build your way up from buckwheat to rye to... Uh, to wheat and that will give you a uh, better better yields i had a tower here but i'm not building it because i don't want to attract them to the sides um I ha and i have a smiley face right here too this that i don't know what that does but uh it's there all right and so i have an issue with magical deer uh so this is one issue in the build so while the bandits won't glitch into here 
the deer were glitching into here and eating all the crops <laughs> up here. So I, I think I fixed, now that that's fixed, I don't need this dude over here anymore. So we're going to, um, we're going to go, oh, I could build a board farm down here though. The only issue is with the board farm, you need, uh, it needs to be built in a high traffic area. Uh, what you do is you fence, you fence in the area where the boars spawn, and then you put something in there, like an, um, what I've been doing is apiaries, because someone will come in to grab the honey, which triggers the rage of the boars, and then you have a tower on the outside that and a hunter, and then that shoots all the boars, and then the hunter comes in and gathers the meat. It's actually really, really, really easy. Oh, look at the deers over there. All right, I'm gonna move this bad boy over here. Um, because there's lots of deer over here. Alright, we're pumping this up to times three. But yeah, it's, um, it's pretty dope. The game's pretty dope. And just to reiterate what I said about the economy, uh, my, my main ones are, are cheese, clothing, coal, and ale and flour and just like all the things that they buy i don't do pottery and i don't do candles anymore because they nerf the hell out of them and the per gold ratio per worker isn't that great but it's also not bad now i do generate pottery and candles for the luxury um i will generate those things for the luxury item or sorry for the luxury taxes that they bring and the luxury happiness that they bring. You can see right now, um, I need to get my food up, but right now the, the lack of luxury items is substantially diminishing my happiness. If I had all these at a hundred plus, I'll get a massive work rate increase. So that's why it's worth it. It's like, you got to factor that in too. It's just like some of these items you need to produce because it will increase the efficiency of all of your industry, which is going to increase a lot of stuff for you. Um, I always upgrade my wells too. Upgrade my stockyard when I can. Yeah, we got we got plenty of gold. We got plenty of resources. Let's upgrade all that stuff. Upgrade your firewood cutters. Make sure that you set um, limitations on how much firewood you're producing. I'm at 2,000, which is um, kind of insane. And I don't know what I was thinking when I did that, but I'll, I'll set a limit once that's completed. And I have one person in the soap shop. Uh, I've been buying herbs. Um, and then producing items in the shop shop. So someone pointed out to me, if you're in a situation where you're buying resources, like a lot, buying resources, like I have no herbs on the map, I'm not collecting herbs on the map, put those industries right next to your trade post. Because what happens is when you when you buy items from the trade post, it stores them in the trade post, and then your laborers um, slash the these two dudes have to unload it. But if you have industry near them, they'll actually go to the trade shop and pull them out themselves. So it has this like massive impact on efficiency because then those guys are focused on bringing in your trade items instead of pulling everything out in the storage. So keep anything that you're buying for industry, keep near the trade shop. That's a That's been a huge efi efficiency uh, maker for me personally. All right, so we got the potter going. Um, crap, I didn't have my my wagon's going. So it's really important to have your wagons going. Full capacity. Alright. I got a temporary shelter here in the industry area. Firewood. So we're going to set a quota on this of... Let's just do 2,000. And so... What's great is if they hit 2,000, they just stop working. So that's great. Um, and they go right back into the labor pool. Alright. We're going to get that up. We'll get the farmers up. Get the beavers up, get everybody up to speed. So right now I'm gold neutral, so that's really great. Not losing anything, not gaining too much, but um, yeah, we're doing tannery. Small villages are just so much easier to manage. Um, now that we have the gold coming in, I'm going to pump this up to max. And we're just going to bring in gold. Because gold is, I mean, what's better than trade? Just making your own currency. So let's... Bump that up to six dudes. That up to six. Oh, we're out of people already. That is one thing about having a small village, though. Alright. So, let's think about this. 
Let's bump that down to four people. Bump this down to four people. We do need a sufficient labor pool. Um, hunter cabin. I actually think I might have some some gold up here somewhere. All right, compost. I'm gonna put in this bad boy. Nah, I don't have any any gold. All right, let's upgrade the shrine. No, there's the gold. Yeah, I have gold right there. Oh, I do have a gold mine up here. I, I keep forgetting that. So, that's great. But we always have this gold mine for later. Sorry, it's been a it's been like a month since I played this. All right, played this exact build. Um, all right, so I'm gonna turn that off, and we're just gonna focus on this bad boy right here, pulling all the gold from there. That is, uh, of course, making the desirability here negative 18 percent. But I, I want the money. Sometimes you just gotta deal with it. Um, and I don't really have anything. I don't necessarily buy tools unless I have an absolute excess of wealth, as I don't really find, I don't find the benefit to them very substantial, unless I have like a big project, like I'm trying to collect a bunch of stone from the map or something, and I don't have anything like that going on. Alright, so I got candle shop down there, let's pump that up. Alright. So, I definitely have an over-allocation of my workforce, so that is the one detriment of having an awesome village. And I need to... I think if I just let the people naturally come in, it will even out. I just... I don't want to expand. Um, another thing is, is I have my healer's house turned off. So here's, here's an interesting... Uh, I think it's probably a glitch, but people will still go to the healer's house even if you've turned it off they just won't heal as fast now this is useful because if people get hurt in the field of, of bat uh, field of battle or just out there and they get attacked by a wolf they'll just sit there and die but if you have a healer's house they'll collect them and bring them back and they'll slowly recover so you can have your cake and eat it too if you build a healer's house and just turn it off you get all the benefits that come with the healer's house and you don't pay for any of it you just don't get a. You just don't get the. Um, you get almost all the benefits. You just don't get the fast healing rate, but you get healing, um, which you don't have. People will just sit in the field and die if you don't have a healer's house. So, build a healer's house and just uh, let them have fun. Well, I think that the patients are limited to t like two people, right? I'm not sure actually. I don't remember how. Many, I I know you could have up to like eight or sixteen people. So, unfilled. Yeah. But it's, it's an interesting little glitch. For sure. Um, Alright, so I covered some of the basics of the economy. What ought to sell well. It, it, at the end of all that stuff, though, you're going to be selling everything. Um, but, like, just concentrate on, like, cheese and clothing. Find, find what works for you. But you want to kind of concentrate on a few items. I recommend you concentrate on things that sell often and actually are used by your people. Because it's like two birds, one stone. Or maybe three birds, I don't know. I, uh, I'm i not good at bird stone math. But uh, you're going to get a lot more birds. If, if you're crazy like that, I guess. Um, I have a lot of dead people, don't I? Alright. Uh, <laughs> so I need to build another graveyard. It's been a, it's been a rough it's been a rough year for this village. But yeah, you can see that my wood is my wood is outrageous. And I'm probably gonna start selling wood. Because I can. Which is crazy because you would never you would never do this on a small build. I mean sorry, on a large build. You would never sell critical resources to expansion, but I don't have to have massive walls. These these walls here, they're just like I just put them up for decoration. I just thought they looked I just thought it made it look cooler. It's a lot cooler than just like having no walls. Um, so yeah, I do plan on expanding. I did plan on expanding this out. What are you doing down there? Oh, it's a there's a piece of stone inside the terraforming. But yeah, I know I did plan on expanding some of that stuff out, but uh, just kind of held off on it. I was gonna have another barn, but I don't I don't need whoa. Those guys are. These guys are going crazy over there. But yeah, now we got the terraforming all all nice and proper. Got lots of stone. Let's upgrade the whole thing. Is 
Yeah, the selection tool in this game is a little weird some on this terraforming. But uh, this is this is Fort Mutt Re revisited. Um, it's a great it's a great little build. A I'll post the seed in the description of the video, and you can come make your own version of Fort Mud. I encourage you to watch the first episode of Fort Mud to sh see how I did it. Do not start on the top of the mountain. I tried that and I died real fast because there's no wood. You want to start down here and then destroy your town center and move it up after you're, after you're done. Um, I could have used my town center within the defensive design as a free tower. That would have been intelligent because it is an awesome thing. However, I kind of wanted a building... Uh, back here in case they do break in that can defend the area what i probably should have done is uh create a created a, a walled in area for this oh look at that we got ourselves a labor pool now but i didn't do that uh because i didn't need i didn't, honestly i don't need to nothing not no naturally occurring army can get through this they can't even honestly they can't even get through these two towers <laughs> like i could probably destroy all like this is uh this is just a little bit overkill in some respect. But, oopsie daisy. Hit the wrong button. But this is what it looks like. Why Why is it always tell me this? You can see I have four work camps um, doing doing their thing. So, I have, the, have that all kind of mapped out. A little bit of industry, a little bit of farming. Uh, really small area for people but man i tell you it's actually kind of nice having s small villages um large vi large villages are overrated in how much micromanaging you have to do but uh i'm trying to see if i can get a good picture of this i can't that might be a good picture no nope, never is all right that's actually probably the best picture right there but yeah, this is this is Fort Mod. So hope you enjoyed the video. Thank you all for watching.